Hey everyone, Andrigatz here and welcome back to my channel! Season 4 is now in full swing and we've got a lot of updates coming to the game and one of them obviously includes better gearing from all across the board. Today we'll delve into all the possible ways that you could increase your gear to the highest level possible depending if you're going solo or participating in group activities. We have a lot to cover so without further ado let's go ahead and start. Let's kick things off with outdoor activities, ideal for solo players or those looking to gear up alts quickly. World Quests are now offering explorer loot typically ranging from item level 454 and can be upgraded with fly stones to 476. Additionally, various events across the Dragon Isles now offer higher tier gear rewards. Specifically, players can obtain veteran gear ranging from 480 to 502 from specific activities such as the quest reward from the Community Fish Soup event, the end chest of Dragonbane Keep, and the Dream Search weekly quest. As a matter of fact, it seems most of them give not one, but two veteran pieces, one from the Cache of Storms and one as a drop. These activities are very easy to complete, the most annoying thing is actually waiting for them to spawn, but yeah, they are a great option to acquiring decent gear early in the season. And that seems to be the case for the first Grand Hunt of the week. If you also have spare Dream Search Call Essence, you can buy BOA tokens and mail them to your alts. They are 454 and it's a very good starting point for any fresh alt. You can even send weapons, necks, trinkets, which is pretty pretty good. Other events such as Time Rifts, Furaka Souls and Super Bloom offer gear of lesser quality and frankly are not really worth spending any time on them. I mean, we've got far better things to be doing, right? In Season 4 we are revisiting all the Dragonflight raids we have so far in the form of Awaken, which will raise the difficulty level but also enhance the rewards. We'll delve into these raids in just a bit, but it's worth noting that each Awaken raid will also bring an Empower War boss that might drop a 490 9 champion gear. It seems there is only one awakened boss at the moment for each week and it should be marked on your map. It also drops a cache of storms which as we already went over gives veteran gear. So yeah, the war boss is actually a really good and all friendly way to get a bit of gear. Also in this patch we'll see the introduction of a new weekly quest in Valdragon replacing the old aiding their core quest. Upon accepting the last hurrah quest you'll have the chance to aid one of the three empowered zones by completing simple outdoor activities. The quest changes every week so it can be either the Dragon Isles events, the Zara Lake Cavern or the Emerald Dream. Completing this quest will yield the champion gear ranging from 493 and can be upgraded further to 515. It's a fantastic opportunity to acquire high level gear very early in the season. But let's be real, it's not as easy as doing time walkings, right? Well, the same high level gear can also be earned easily by participating in the time walking event. More specifically, completing 5 time walking dungeons and completing this quest rewards you with a piece of champion gear. Luckily, season 4 kicks off with a burning crusade time walking, so we can pretty much get almost a free loot. And it's not just any kind of loot, I mean it's coming from the dragonfly raids and there are some really really good pieces there. Moreover, the gear dropping from time walking dungeons is the same as heroics, which is adventurer, and can go up to 489. Also, keep in mind that time walking dungeons don't have any item level requirement, so you can pretty much do them in fresh 70 alts. It seems that you can also get a heroic raid loot from completing the Black Temple time walking quest which requires killing Illidan. Alright, let's talk more about the dungeons, which is one of the most grindable ways to get good gear. Well, in this season all dungeons from heroics and onwards have undergone a substantial level squish. They offer a more challenging experience compared to season 3, but also come bearing better rewards. For example, a plus 5 in this season will feel the same as a plus 15 in the previous season, in terms of difficulty and of course rewards. That roughly estimates to 10 levels difference. But I don't want to get ahead of myself, let's take it from the start. Normal dungeons will maintain their difficulty from the previous season, but now reward explorer gear ranging from 460 to 476. Heroics drop adventurer from 476 to 489 item level, but they are notably more challenging with an item level requirement of 441. Mythic Zero dungeons have also been revamped to provide a challenging yet rewarding experience. They should roughly feel like a plus 10, but still without the pressure of a timer. Completing a Mythic Zero can yield champion gear ranging from 493 to 502. Additionally, it awards hero gear from the Great Vault. 
While Mythic Zeros still have a weekly lockout, they provide much better gear and are an excellent source for farming gear very early in the season, especially for Mythic Plus players who just want to quickly jump into higher level keys. And speaking of keys, Mythic Plus dungeons have also changed drastically, and each level gets substantially harder and harder. But let's see about the gear numbers. Well, starting from a plus 2, they drop champion gear and progress to drop hero by level plus 7. Completing at least a plus 8 will reward the highest obtainable tier from the Great Vault, which is myth gear. Essentially, a plus 8 and 9 will yield a 519 piece in the vault, while completing a plus 10 gets you the maximum item level of 522. Keep in mind that both pieces can be upgraded to 528, so aiming for at least a plus 8 should be your first priority, at least for the first week, if of course you are planning to get the highest gear. It's worth noting that the Megan Dungeon, the Dawn of the Infinite, will also yield better rewards. While completing it on a Mythic Zero provides champion gear, tackling the hard mode rewards hero gear starting from 509 item level. However, it will be a lot tougher than the standard Mythic Zero run. Overall, Season 4 dungeons offer a higher challenge, but come with meaningful rewards. Ok, so before I move on to the raids, it's also crucial to discuss the changes for the gear upgrading currencies. More specifically, Flystones and Crests are getting a bit of a shake-up in this patch, mainly due to the dungeon level squish. Flystones will continue to drop from any sort of activity, as we know from previous seasons, but the numbers will change. Essentially, what this means is that completing a plus 2 in Season 4 will yield the same number of Flystones as completing a plus 12 in Season 3. And as far as Crests go, well, Wellblings once again can be found easily from outdoor content, heroic dungeons and LFR raiding. Many weekly events will yield Drake Crest along with the completion of Mythic Zero dungeons and normal raids. Wyrms will be obtainable from a Mythic 2 to a plus 5 dungeon and heroic raiding, while aspects on the other hand will be available from a plus 6 and above and of course Mythic raiding. The drop rates remain the same, so you can get 12 crests if you complete a key in time and 5 if you don't make it in time, but still finish it. And there is a weekly cap of 120 crests of each type. Alright, back to gearing! Undoubtedly, one of the best ways to improve your gear throughout the season is by participating in raids. As I mentioned earlier, Season 4 introduces a set rotation of Awakened Raids. Each week, one of the Dragonfly Raids will become Awakened and by the first week of June, all three raids will be at the same time. When a raid is Awakened, it offers higher difficulty and better loot including gear that can be upgraded to item level 528 and even 535 for some specific items. But let's take a closer look at the loot tables. In LFR, the loot table is 480 to 489. 9, normal raid offers gear from 493 to 502, while heroic difficulty provides loot from 506 to 515. Mythic bosses will yield the highest loot available ranging from 519 to 528. Additionally, you can find some very rare pieces that are a few item levels higher than the rest of the table. And to speak numbers, this translates to 496 from LFR, 509 from normal, 522 from heroic, and yes, it can be up to 535 from the end bosses on mythic raids. Joining these raids is essential for acquiring the highest tier gear available in the season, including, as I said, some exceptionally powerful pieces. In this season, we also see the return of gear vendors from whom you can purchase gear from any of the three Dragonfly raids. The new currency is called Antique Bronze Bullion, similar to the dinar system we had in Shadowlands final season. We've got three vendors located in the parting glass on the east side of Aldragon, and each vendor is dedicated to one of the specific Dragonfly raids. They are offering powerful gear including trinkets, weapons and some very rare items, all sold for two bullion each. According to Blizzard, we'll be able to earn one bullion per week per character by defeating Awakened bosses, with the cap rising by one each week. If a player misses a week, we'll have the opportunity to catch up to the current weekly maximum. And that seems to be the actual case, I already got one from killing a boss on LFR. And that's pretty good for solo players. Basically, you don't have to go with a pre-made group, you can just queue up for LFG and get your bullion for the week. 
The Indinar gear starts at item level 493 and follows a new upgrade path called Awakened, allowing it to be upgraded to the highest item levels available up to 528. Certain end bosses' very rare items can be upgraded a bit further up to 535, which is higher than any other item can reach this season. This system actually offers flexibility and enables players to customize and optimize the gear according to their needs, which is a very welcome addition to the game. And given the abundance of trinkets that we are getting in this season, consider taking a look at websites like Archon or Blood Mallet to make informed decisions on what to purchase. Additionally, simulating your characters and referring to detailed guides from sources like Wowhead or Ice Events or any other guide can provide valuable insights on which items to prioritize first. Another exclusive item purchasable with Tomb Bullion is the Scale of Awakening designed for upgrading legendary weapons. In Season 4, legendary weapons like Najuro, the Unbound Legacy and Feral of the Dream Render will regain relevance thanks to this new item. The Scale of Awakening allows you to bring your legendary to a base item level of 502 and from that point you can upgrade it further using fly stones and the new awakened crest. For those who didn't get their lego yet, it's worth considering farming for it, especially if you play one of these four classes. So Najuro drops from Sarkareth in the Aberus raid, while Firalath drops from Firak in Amirdrasil. So alongside the Bullion, a new currency will be introduced from raiding known as the Awakened Temple Stone, a new tier omni token, if you will, that drops from the end raid bosses of the Awakened raids. That basically means Razageth in Vault of the Incarnates, Sarkareth in Amberus, and Firak in Amirdrasil. These omni tokens are universal, they don't have any class or any armor type attached to them, meaning everyone can roll on them. They can be used to purchase a tier set piece from a vendor named Renagos, again in the same area with the other Dinar vendors. Note as well that the difficulty of the Awaken rate from which the Omni token came from will influence the initial item level and upgrade track of the piece that you can buy. And while we are on the topic of tier sets, let me say it loud and clear, it's official. Tier sets are making a comeback in Season 4, but with no new raid inside, Blizzard has placed their trust in the hands of the community. We were given the opportunity to vote for our favorite Dragonfly set bonus and trust mock separately. Based on the votes for each spec and class, the most popular tier set will be introduced in Season 4. So this can be obtained from the Awakened Raid for the week, dropping from the same bosses that previously yielded tier sets. Your best chance to complete your tier set will be through raiding and the Great Vaults, but if you are missing some pieces, you can always consider completing this Season 4 Master Achievement. To earn this, you'll have to complete either of these three sub-achievements. This include clearing either of the Heroic Awakened Raids, reaching the Challenger Rank 2 in the new PvP season, or earning Keystone Master in Mythic Plus. That will require reaching 2000 rating in Mythic Plus. Earning the Master Achievement grants you the Awakened Mark of Mastery. This item can be exchanged for a Heroic Equivalent tier piece in PvE or PvP. The NPC for this trade is Harustraza and she's located once again in the same place with all the other Dinar vendors. You only get one of these, so make sure to spend it wisely. The Catalyst is also making a return in this season, providing us with the opportunity to convert any non-tier piece into a tier piece, which is an excellent way for filling out any gaps in our tier sets. It will be available from the launch of season 4, starting with one charge and automatically gaining another one every week. These charges are one per character, so all of your owls can use their own charge at the very start of the season. Obviously, completing your 2 set and then the 4 set are your primary goals here, as they can greatly boost your performance. Another great way to get a powerful item every week is obviously through the Great Vault. Our lovely vault is returning once again, along with the disappointment that it brings along. But <laughs> jokes aside, the vault is offering a plethora of gear choices, catering to both casual and hardcore players alike. We have three primary sources of gear, Raiding, Dungeons and PvP. For Raiding, you'll need to defeat 2, 4 or 6 Awakened bosses to unlock 1, 2 or 3 slots respectively. When it comes to Dungeons, there are various options available, ranging from Heroic Difficulty to Mythic and even Time Walking Dungeons. And keep in mind that Time Walkings will count as Heroics, granting you 489 Veteran gear. Additionally, completing a plus 8 or higher Mythic Dungeon will reward the highest tier of gear starting from 590 
19 and can be upgraded to 528. The last row involves PvP and yes, I did not forget about the PvP pros out there. New season means new gear from PvP, ranking resets, you know, all of that good stuff. Earning honor while engaging in rated PvP matches will reward you with gear in your Great Vault based on your rank. Additionally, you can earn conquest points which can be used to purchase gear from the vendor in the Valdragon Hub you know, if you can find that vendor. This gear can be further upgraded using honor to match PvE item levels, effectively making PvP and dual purpose activity for both competition and gearing. And last but certainly not least, the last method to acquire top tier gear is through the crafting system, which remains highly relevant. Professions offer an excellent opportunity to close up any gear gaps that may exist by exhausting all the previous ways. In Season 4 we will see the introduction of a new crafting material called the Spark of Awakening. To create this item you'll need to combine two splinter sparks with 250 fly stones. The half spark can be earned from completing the Valdragon weekly quest mentioned earlier, or for PvP players it can be obtained from Alicia's weekly in the PvP hub. There also appears to be a catch-up system in place, allowing players to earn additional splinter sparks if they missed out a week. This can be obtained from various activities such as completing keys, killing awakened bosses and winning PvP games. But just a side note here, the first week of the patch we can actually get two half sparks and eventually create one full item, but from thereafter only one splinter spark can be obtained in each given week. As I mentioned, this spark of awakening is created by pairing two half sparks. When slotted into the crafted gear, this powerful reagent scales its base item level to a range of 489 to 502, depending on the quality of the gear and the crafter's skill level. To maximize this spark's effectiveness though, it's advisable to pair it with an enchanted crest. The enchanted Wyrm's Awakened crest elevates the item level from 502 to 515, while the Aspects one further increases it from 512 to 525. These valuable items can be acquired from an enchanter, but first you'll need to obtain the nascent versions from the enchanting vendor. The nascent worm requires 45 regular worms, while the nascent aspect requires 16 normal aspect ones. And it's worth noting that the gear crafted with aspect crest is just one upgrade path lower than the current maximum mythic gear, making it incredibly powerful. Don't forget that you can also apply embellishments to your crafted gear to further amplify its power, or you can use embellished items like the Elemental Lariat. And of course you can recraft your older crafted gear by providing the new crest and Spark of Awakening. As for PvP, you can purchase trophies found from the vendors in the PvP hub in Valdragon. For instance, the Trophy of Conquest, which is the highest quality one, when paired with a Spark of Awakening, it will increase your item to 528. And yeah, that's pretty much all. Season 4 presents plenty of avenues for quickly and efficiently gearing up, catering to various playstyles and preferences. Whether engaging in outdoor events, doing Mythic Plus, raiding, participating in PvP, or using up lots and lots of currencies, well, we do have a lot of options to reach high item levels. Sure, more could be implemented for solo players, but that's the plan for the War Within. And yeah, that's a talk we're gonna have another day. For now, thank you so much for tuning in, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date. Good luck with whatever you're doing, happy season, happy gearing, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye! Curious about everything coming in season 4? Well, check out this video to learn more.